In this video, I will use lots of inspiration from pictures of one of my favorite fighter pilots. Do minor scratch build. Use decal sheets from different manufacturers. And play with the chipping, paint skin and heavy weathering. All this and much more I used to create the Slovak MiG-29 Fulcrum. Ahojte priatelia, vítajte na mojom kanáli. In Slovak language it means Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video I will build the Slovak Air Force Mikoyan Gorevic MiG-29 AS in 1 to 48 scale from Greywell Hobby. Moldings of this kit are very detailed. It's one of the best MiG-29 models in 1 to 48 scale so far. The kit doesn't lack details like rivets, antennas, a option for closed or open upper air intakes, main air intakes, folded flaps, air lawns and wing leading edges. Very detailed are also the landing gear, wheel wells, cockpit and the ejection seat. The kit includes an option for an open or closed lower engine cover, two detailed Klimov RG33 jet engines, a trolley and three fuel tanks. The kit includes a set of photo wedge metal parts and antennas from resin, particularly for the AS version. The instruction manual is designed so that it does not cause problems when reading or building. But few things are missing or don't fit, you need to read it carefully at least three times. On the last page is a color list for Gunze Sangyo Mr. Hobby color paints. The technical stencils and paintings manual are very helpful, but they include only markings and a paint scheme for one aircraft. And that's the MiG-29 tactical number 0921 with the digital camouflage. I have nothing against it, the camouflage is beautiful, but there were 12 machines upgraded for the AS version. The water slide decals look amazing and in high quality, but I think I will go my own way on this. Great! I'm super excited! Let's build this legend! Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. During the whole build I will take inspiration from book Lietalizme MiG-29 from the Slovak fighter pilot Kamil Glovnia. The book is full of beautiful and detailed pictures of MiG-29s, useful information and interesting stories. Let's start to build a model with the ejection seat and the cockpit top. First of all, you need to clean the cockpit parts with a sharp hobby knife. The plastic is softer, so there is no bigger problem with cleaning. I also smooth out the edges with a sand stick. In this case, it's an ordinary nerf file for fingernails. I won't use any resin colored photo edge parts or 3D printed decals. The cockpit is detailed enough. This time I will build the cockpit completely out of the box. You have to watch out for the side panels. The fit is not the best. You have to glue them firmly and keep a certain angle. The K36 ejection seat assembly was quite ok. There is a small fit issue with the parachute box. A small gap is showing between the parts. Let's try out the kit's PE parts. During the seat belts assembly, I struggled very much. Then a lot of time and gluing with super glue wasn't easy. 
the metal is harder than expected. The MFI-54 and the PUS-29 multifunction displays were not included in the kit, so I had to improvise and create them from a thin plastic sheet. Ok, the cockpit parts are ready for the paint job. Let's cover the metal parts with a layer of primer surface. The cockpit top Side panels, instrument panel and the exterior are painted with Mr. Color C308 semi-gloss grey. Since I'm painting with the C308, I also paint the wheel wells. The front instrument panel cover and the ejection seat are painted with Mr. Color C2 Black. Let's paint all the details with a paintbrush. There are so many of them, and the painting took me two days to complete, but I enjoyed it very much. After I finished painting details, I gave all the parts a proper dry brush weathering. First with a dark grey and second with a metallic color. Next, I seal the paint job with a glossy varnish coat.
painting details like instrument indicators in this scale are challenging enough. The kit includes very nice decals, so I choose them instead. Let's give the cockpit parts a black wash. It will highlight all the small details and pen lines. Cleaning the wash is easy. You just need a cotton swab an enamel thinner. Alright, the cockpit assembly wasn't easy at all. Both side panels didn't fit and I had to cut large pieces from the back of the panels. So be aware of this issue. Luckily, it doesn't affect the final look of the cockpit. Next, I glue the cockpit tab into the fuselage. After struggling with the side panels, I worried if the cockpit will look ok. But it looks very good, so let's continue building. The fulcrum is famous for its shark gills. Actually, there are airing takes. When flying in higher speeds and staying shut down on the ground, the upper airing takes are closed. Speaking of air intakes, the main intakes have ugly pin marks inside. They must be filled up with putty. Ok, before I can glue the upper and lower part of a fuselage, I must work on the wheel wheels. I already painted them grey, but there are some hydraulics missing. I added these details using copper and lead wires of different diameters. And again, let's paint the details and give them a proper wash.
Gluing the wheel wells was tricky. It looks like there is also some fitting imperfections. I had to cut some plastic. Be careful with this work step. Meanwhile, the putty on the air intakes dried out. I sand out the putter on the water with a smooth sandpaper. Gluing the intake halves was ok, but there are still some gaps showing. I must fill them up now, because it will be a problem after gluing to the lower fuselage. You can choose from a plastic or metal air intake door. The metal ones have better details. I bend them into a neat shape with a hobby knife and a special bender for PE parts. Let's check out how it's gonna look like. Looks good. Finally, I can glue the upper and lower fuselage part together. The fit is very good. I progress slowly and glue the halves in several steps. The instruction manual doesn't contain any information for putting weight to the radar code. To be sure, I added some. Very interestingly designed is the vertical stabilizer assembly. It must be glued to the fuselage first. It includes small pinholes for the wing flaps. Without gluing them, it's impossible to add the landing flaps. And this is how it's done. I don't need to glue the landing flaps. They are fully movable. It's a very nice feature. I don't know if you noticed, but the 29 has its ailerons positioned a little bit up. I 
I checked out a lot of pictures of park fulcrums. Some of them had the front wing's leading edges retracted and some extended. I choose for the extended ones. The MiG-29 has its chaff and flare dispensers positioned right before the vertical tail. The kit includes two Klimov RD-33 jet engines. They are very nicely designed and detailed. I need to assemble them before gluing the main air intakes. The engines are attached to the hull using pinholes and throats. Ok, before I get to the jet engine painting, I add hydraulics to the landing gear. The best suitable choice for me are lead wires of diameters from 0.2 up to 0.5 mm. I check out lots of pictures of hydraulics and I tried my best to create them as best I know. Lead wires are excellent, they are soft and you can bend them very easy. In this work step, for gluing, I use super glue. I work in the aviation industry myself. Tightening clamps are used to fix the hydraulics. I simply made these clamps out of aluminum foil. Let's work on the main landing gear legs. I use the same method, bending length wires of different diameters, gluing them with super glue and adding aluminum foil. And this is how it looks like. I'm quite satisfied. One mention, I'm not a pro. I build my models just for fun and love to aviation. Finally, let's prime the landing gear, paint it, paint the air intakes, jet engines and other details.
Next, I gave the details a proper black wash. During the time when I was working on the jet engines, I planned to let one of the engines exposed. Unfortunately, it didn't go well. The fit was so bad that I struggled a lot. The other issue was the big visible gaps between both fuselage parts. It would look very ugly and weird if they were exposed. I decided to glue both engine covers to the fuselage. It's a pity because the kit is expensive. Next, I glue the parachute system and air brake. Gluing the heads-up display was ok. You must bend the metal part in a needed shape. For this work step, I use superglue. Let's glue the front windshield and the cockpit canopy. I used two glues for that. The front windshield is a part of the fuselage and it's glued with Mr. Cement SP. The cockpit canopy is glued with PVA glue. Later in the video I will remove the PVA glue and glue the canopy in an open position. The AS version of the MiG-29 is modified to the NATO standards. The modification includes also a big fin antenna behind the cockpit and four small antennas in front. These parts are cast from resin they are very fragile, so be careful. Next, I fill all gaps with a diluted putty. Most of the gaps were visible over the chaff and flare dispensers, the radar cone and the antennas. Oh, and one more gap, the engine covers. The gap was so big that I had to use epoxy putty from Tamiya. I use this putty only for sculpting and creating buildings. But now it comes handy. Unfortunately, the kit does not contain any air-to-air -air missiles. The Fulcrum will be equipped with a center fuel tank, two radar-guarded R-27s R, 
and two infrared R73s. I ordered some extra accessories and there will be two more R60M missiles coming soon. In fact, if you are asking where did I get the R27s and R73s, they are from my spare missiles of the 1-48 scale SU-27UB hobby basket. Since I assembled the air-to-air -air missiles, I also glued the weapon hardpoints. Let's prepare the model for the paint job. I masked the wheel wells, air intakes, jet nozzles, and the cockpit canopy with Italeri and Tamiya masking tape and make Jimenez liquid mask. Before priming, I cleaned the model with a clear alcohol. The fulcrum is ready for the paint job. Let's give it a primer coat first. The machine that I chose for this project has a tactical number 6425. It has the standard grey green camouflage, heavy weathering and chip off surface. I was very lucky to see the machine personally on CF 2022. In fact, I visited the air festival just for the MiG-29 to personally say goodbye to these beautiful machines and honor our fighter pilots. Since the machine has a chip off surface, I decided to add an aluminum coat first. The metallic surface must be protected with a flat varnish. You need to add at least two layers. Now you can add the chipping fluid. In this case, I use Mick Hinemus chipping fluid, not a hairspray. Next, I paint all dark grey surfaces like the radar cone and sensor covers. Before I can continue painting, I must the painted dark grey parts with masking tape. Let's paint the black anti-glare stripe. And again, for not overpainting with the camouflage paints, I mask it with masking tape. For the camouflage, I will use Mr. Color C308 Light Ghost Gray, C319 Light Green, and C325 grey.
The underbelly of the model is painted with C308 light coats gray. The paint has a good pigment and it's easy to thin it down. I usually use a 1 to 5 mix ratio to leaven and thinner. 1 drop of paint to 5 drops of thinner. The green color is a mix of 30% of C319 light green and 70% of C325 gray. As you can see, I'm painting the whole camouflage by hand, no mask or masking putty. I take my time and progress very slowly. Let's paint the faded areas. The mix served for 30 years in the Slovak Air Force. This particular machine 6425 was manufactured in the year 1994 in the Moscow plant. In 1995 it was delivered to Slovakia and it still wears the standard light grey and green camouflage. So after 30 years of service the surface is heavily faded and weathered. I study photographs and trying to fade each panel separately. It's very time-consuming work. This technique is very effective. Just add 10 or 20% of white or light grey paint to your original camo. The same technique is applied on the light green. Since the machine was used for many years, a few panels were changed. I don't know exactly why, maybe stress damage or too much paint peeling. Anyway, it looks interesting. Next, I remove all the masking tape except the cockpit. Now I paint all the small details with a thin paintbrush. The small details are flare dispensers, antennas, sensors, pitot tube, headlights and navigation lights, hydraulic hoses and much more.
Next is chipping. For this work step, you need a cup of warm water and an old flat or thin paintbrush, a toothpick, hobby knife and lots of patience. I first brushed the surface of the model with a toothbrush. After the paint started to peel off slowly, I added tiny chips with a toothpick and a hobby knife. I'm trying my best to replicate the chips from the photographs that I took on Siath. It's time consuming work and I spent about a week for the whole chipping process. Ok, the chipping is done. Now I seal the camouflage with a layer of clear glossy varnish coat. In fact, I seal every painted part with a varnish. It's not included in the video, but I varnish also the landing gear, wheels, gear covers, weapons and the fuel tank. The next step is the decal placement. Since the kit has only decals for the digital camo, I had to purchase some extras. I purchased decals from Seahart, Begemot, Copro and Tecmode. The Slovak insignias from Begemot and Seahart are too stretched and inaccurate. Unfortunately, the Begemot decals are destroyed. Luckily, the Copro's decals are the best for the job. For technical stencils, I'll use decal from Tecmod. Here is how I apply the water slide decals. First, I apply the Vallejo decal fixer diluted with water. Then, I apply the decal and place it into the right position with a wet paintbrush. After that, I remove the unnecessary water and air bubbles with a wet cotton swab. Next, I apply a decal softener chemical. The chemical slightly edges the surface of the decal. In a few seconds, the decal will soften and with the help of a dry cotton swab, the decal will be adapted to the surface and the necessary panels and riveting will be created. After the decal placement is complete, I seal the decals with a layer of gloss varnish. Now for the weathering. This time, I will not add the black penny line wash. Instead, I still have some dark grey mix of these two Tamiya washes. I don't apply the wash over the whole model. I focus only on the panel lines and rivets. Some washes have the ability to give the model a darker pattern look and I want to avoid this. To remove the wash, I use a cotton swab and enamel odorless thinner.
Next, I apply a flat varnish coat. The reason is simple. Oil paints and pigments are easily to control on a flat varnish surface. I began to weather the mic with a white oil paint. As I mentioned before, the 6425's upper insignias and also the whole camo are very faded from weather conditions. To create this effect, I apply small dots of oil paint and try to blend it with the surface. I had to do it a couple of times. Then, I remove the unnecessary paint with enamel thinner. I wasn't quite satisfied with the airbrush camo fading, so I also faded the whole upper surface with a wild oil paint. Of course, as a template I use photographs. Let's weather the lower fuselage. From the book and internet pictures I can see that the lower fuselage has lots of dirty and greasy spots over the wheel wells, wings, engine covers or horizontal stabilizers. To recreate this effect I decided to use a mix of lamp black and burnt umber oil paint. But this time I blend the oil paint with the surface with enamel thinner. After the oil weathering is done, I seal it with a layer of Mr. Color GX114 Super Soft Matte Varnish. I don't want the tires look new. That's why I weather them with a European Earth pigment and seal it with matte varnish. The model is ready for the assembly. First, I remove the masking tape and the liquid mask from the cockpit canopy. I progress slowly 
because I don't want to scratch the clear path with the hobby knife. Then I glue the landing gear, the gear covers, wheels, the big underbelly fuel tank and the R27, R733 and R60 air-to-air -air missiles. A park and turn off fulcrum has the elevator tilted slightly downwards. So I glue them in a tilted position with super glue. At the very end of the assembly, I glue and paint small details like cockpit mirrors, antennas, and glue the cockpit canopy. And the grey wall hobby 148 scale Mikka Gurevich MiG 29 AS is finished. This build was a relaxing one and lots of fun. I hope you like this video build. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like or leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching guys, stay awesome and here is a final reveal.